why, let me go on, this is why army life always fascinated me tremendously. I don't know how is it with you, do you still have, no, you have a professional army, you have a professional Yeah, okay. <coughs> when I was young, in still ex-Yugoslavia, we didn't have a professional army. And it was, uh, for me, quite a formative experience to serve the army for a year. Because my first song was precisely, you know, I'm, I must say psychologically, as a private person, I'm a kind of a fanatical, okay, I wouldn't say fascist, but almost, in the sense of, I like order, I like people to obey, and so on. I like order. But, no, so I expected, my God, it will be paradise, the army. And I immediately got, that's not the army. The real army has the surface, they pretend that it's order. But beneath it, it's all one big chaos full of sexual obscenities and so on. And it took me a long time to discover again how there is nothing subversive in this. It was even worse. That's now the crucial rule. If you as a soldier violated some explicit prohibitions, you fell asleep on guard, you were drunk, whatever, no problem, they say, ha ha, that's human. <laughs> if you violated this implicit prohibitions, if you didn't participate in all these obscenities, obscene rituals, and so on, then you were really excluded. That was the true scene. And let me tell you a story which I'm sure you don't know because it's, I used it in one of my marginal, less known books from years ago. Uh, this was my formative, almost mystical experience, epiphany in the army. I was in a small group of military barracks, small one, where uh, we didn't have a hospital. We just had a one medical room where a guy who was some kind of a technician, a little bit trained, slept and had there also, you will see why this is important, a small wash basin with water pipe and a big mirror, and you will see why this is important. Behind the mirror there were stuck uh, pictures of this in pre-pornographic times, you know, these half-dressed girls in bikini, whatever. Okay, so once a week, we soldiers who claim that we have problems with our health, we were called there, and we were, it was a collective examination, we were all sitting in a row, in one room, and then one after the other, we were called up to the doctor who came from a central military hospital, and he asked us what is wrong. So then there was a problem. One of us stood up and said, I have pain in my penis. This already was very problematic, because if in Serbo-Croat you say, I have pain in my penis, in Serbo-Croat, boli me kurats, this means a very vulgar way of saying, fuck off, I don't care what you are saying. <laughs> but then the soldier insisted, but I really mean it. Okay, the doctor told him, show us. So in front of us, the soldier undressed, and the doctor asked him, okay, what's wrong with your penis? The soldier said, I cannot put the skin down, it hurts, it's too tight. The doctor told him, do it. The soldier did it, the doctor said, but you can do it, you are lying. No, said the soldier, it's when I have erection that I cannot do it. Now come the right. Then the doctor said, okay, masturbate, show us. The soldier in front of all of us started to masturbate, but of course, it was a comedy, he didn't get the red. So then the doctor took those photos, you remember it, and showed them, sorry for you to impersonate, <laughs> and, and told him, look, what dress, what dress, masturbate, look at this girl, and it became an orgy. The soldier started to laugh, the doctor started to laugh, the doctor cast a glance at us, laughed with wings, it was a total obscenity. And it took me some time to get it. This is how power functions. That this was part of power. There was absolutely nothing subversive in it. This, what we call the, this male bonding of the army, is sustained precisely by these shared obscenities. It's the same with homosexuality. In the unit where I was, usually people say, oh, army is homophobic. It's much more ambiguous. On the one hand, it was extremely homophobic. If a soldier was discovered to be effectively homosexual, he was dismissed before being dismissed, he was beaten by other soldiers every night, it was horrible. But that's one side of the story. The other side is that it became a jargon in my unit to, for example, in the morning, we didn't uh, greet each other, good morning or whatever, but smoke mine. 
or I'll smoke yours, which was a coded way to say I'll suck yours, Felicia, and so on. It was, you know, you see this paradox, explicit homosexuality vanished, but at the same time, all the daily life was totally penetrated, permitted by homosexual innuendos. So, just the last point here. I am not saying now this is, uh, that obscenity is always in the serving the power. It is, but it's much more complex. There also is, I claim, obscenity, which signals, and here it's difficult to draw a distinction, but it can be done. Obscenity which, uh, how should I put it, guarantees or bears witness to the fact that we broke the barrier and are really close to each other. It also happened to me in an, uh, in the, while, uh, while I was serving the army, an even nicer adventure, totally crazy. My best friend there was an Albanian soldier, because it was a little bit of elitism. He was in lecture, I was, we talked a lot. And we wanted to become friends. So how did we, you know, one thing is this, politeness, you know, like, you must hate them, I would hate them. Foreigners came here, India, what beautiful food, Taj Mahal, and so on. This is racism for me. How did we make a step further? Uh, one morning, this soldier approached me and said, I fuck your mother, I screw your mother. I know what this was. This was an offer of friendship, like, let's pass to intimate obscenities. And he expected from me uh, a, 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 an appropriate reply. Believe me, I don't have a problem with it. I immediately answered him, go on after I finish with your sister. No. <laughs> and then we embraced each other, we were friends. Now comes the beauty. Since we were intellectuals, this doesn't mean that from now on, we all the time talk just dirty stuff and so on. Never. We had only, he was also a philosopher, intellectual conversations. Just to remind ourselves that we are friends, it became codified. Every morning when we greeted each other instead of good morning or that, I smoke yours or whatever, without any irony smile. He looked at me and said when he noticed me, mother, I said sister. <laughs> you know, without any smile, it was just a reminder we are truly friends. <laughs> so this is for me the problem. Obscenity is, it should neither be, in, in, again, in ex-Yugoslavia, since you still remember it, the Tito Street, I was told here. I think the proof that up to a point it did work, this brotherhood of all nations, where the exchange of dirty, obscene jokes. How did it work? We were not telling to each other jokes against each other. Each nation in ex-Yugoslavia was uh, identified by a certain racist creature. And we gladly assumed this cliché and made fun of ourselves. When I met a Serb friend, I told him a joke about us Slovenes, he told me a joke, these are simple, stupid jokes, but they were a means of actual solidarity. For example, I don't know, <coughs> Montenegro people, Montenegro, no, now it's a state, small state, uh, they, their racial identity was that they are lazy, really lazy. At the same time, they are part of the earthquake territory. There are often earthquakes there. So what's the standard Montenegro joke? How does a Montenegro boy masturbate? He digs a hole in the earth, puts the penis in, and wait for the earthquake. He's even too lazy to move his hands. But you, you see the point. The point is that this wasn't racism. That was so wonderful. You know, instead of this politically correct, anti-racist, or oh, horror, let's forget racist cliches, let's talk about what we really are. No, we gladly assumed the cliches and played with them. A proof, when ethnic tensions really started to explode in ex-Yugoslavia, these jokes disappeared. It's kind of a proof for me that uh, it worked. So again, the lesson here is that 